what Mike and Pete have got me here primarily for is, is to talk to you about Carolina rig fishing. And that's something that uh, really wasn't a real popular technique here in this state. I mean, it never, it never was even known to be a technique here in the state for a long time. And uh, a, a guy named uh, Jack Wade won a tournament on the St. John's River, won a BASS tournament on the St. John's River. And I want to say it was somewhere in the, maybe it was in the early 80s or the late 70s. And he won it on a technique called a Carolina rig. And I thought, man, what is a Carolina rig? I had to, when I, when I heard about it and read about it in the magazine, I had to learn more. I said, man, that sounds really cool. And he did it in a section of the river that I was pretty familiar with. It's Dunn's Creek, which is a real narrow body of water with a lot of current, a lot of deep, deep water, deep bends and stuff like that. And it was a wintertime, early spring tournament, and he was throwing this Carolina rig in those deep bends, and he caught fish on it. And I had to find out more about it. And you know, as now we know what a Carolina rig is, but that, back then we, you know, when I finally saw what it was, I said, well, heck, that's the same thing that I fish with in the river when I'm fishing for catfish or croaker or red bass, when I've got a piece of dead shrimp or or a piece of cut bait on it. And it's the same rig that we use in the ocean, fishing the same way, it's a bottom fishing rig. And I said, well, what do you do with it? You put a plastic worm on the end of the hook and you throw it out there and instead of just letting it sit and the fish come to it, you kind of move it along real slow and you cover water with it and, and the fish bite it. And I, I just got fascinated. So I picked it up and started using it on a little lake near Gainesville called Lake Santa Fe, which is not a typical Florida lake, or at least what most people consider to be a typical Florida lake. This area is full of them. It's these pothole lakes that are, that are deep, clear lakes that have very little uh, vegetation. There's a lot of open water, uh, very little surface vegetation except for the perimeter of the lakes. And I found out that if you got out in the middle of these lakes, you could find these little subtle contours and slight bit of grass growing off the bottom. And that's where a lot of these fish like to hang out when they're not on the bank spawning. Leader length is something that, that a lot of people have good, you know, and they're very good valid questions on it. And I try and keep my leader length based on, and I go by water temperature. Colder water conditions, I use a shorter leader. Uh, warmer water conditions, I use a little bit longer leader. And when I say longer, I mean, I'll, I'll never go over six foot in length ever again on a leader. And, and for two reasons, the main thing is uh, like I said back in the early days with a six foot rod and a six foot leader, when you hooked a fish and you got him to the boat, you've still got six feet of line out there that you're trying to make a fish get to within arm's reach to either lip him or to net him. And if you've got a partner, you know, it's, it's helpful with a net. But uh, I mean, we used to use, and when I went to a seven foot rod, I used a seven foot leader. I would always end up with my weight at the tip of my rod and then I'd end up putting the hook down in the butt of the rod. So look, that's a seven six rod. If I'd still gone on with that theory, that's how much leader I'd have out. How much trouble would you have trying to corral a fish that you're trying to land if he's seven feet away? So I keep my leader length at pretty much at a standard. And this is it. I mean, when I measure it off, it's usually from the middle of my chest, right there at the swivel, out to the end of my fingers. That's the length I use 99% of the time in any conditions, but if it gets cold, if the water temperature gets below 50 degrees or in the 55 degree range, I'll probably go half that length or so, just to shorten it up. Yes, sir. Now, I, I know you said water temperature, you said 99% use this, the same length. Um, as far as water clarity goes, um, do, you, do you switch it up at all? If it's a little bit muddier, do you want the bait a little bit closer to the weight where the noise is? Yeah, that, that that's, I haven't, I haven't used it in that, but it makes sense, but I haven't done it for that reason. Uh, I think generally, I, I base it on the activity level of the fish. If the water, excuse me, if the water's cold, fish are gonna be a little less active and they're gonna be tighter to the cover. And uh, I want that, that bait to be a little closer to whatever object it is that I'm feeling. Uh, I feel like I, I kind of got ahead of myself. What I wanted to talk to you, you know, I, I generally go in order, and I was talking about length of the rod, length of the leaders, and it kind of threw me off. Um, the main and the biggest, biggest feature of the Carolina rig, and the most important to me, 
is the weight and the, and, the, and the amount of weight that you use with a Carolina rig. A lot of people that fish a Carolina rig tend to use too light of a weight. Everybody I talk to that says they have trouble feeling fish, have trouble understanding what a bite is, usually say they fish, well, you know, how heavy a weight do you use? Well, three eighths or a half. And I go, that's just way too light. Uh, a lot of times you have trouble with that light of weight when you're trying to cast a Carolina rig. Your bait will go this way and your weight will go this way and it just kind of doesn't make a good, good cast. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their touted special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.